We will get underway. Kia ora, good morning everyone. I declare the meeting open and invite everyone to stand to say the opening karaoke. Yep, so welcome everyone to today's Regulatory Processes Committee meeting. Please note that the meeting is being live streamed. Please let me or Democracy Services know, well this is for councillors, if you intend to leave the meeting. We will aim to have morning tea around 10.30 a.m. I move that the Regulatory Process Committee accepts the apology from Mayor Foster. Councillor O'Neill for lateness. A second, uh, thank you, Councillor Matthews. <laughs> right. Put the motion, it's been moved and seconded. Please vote. The motion is carried. I call on members to declare any conflicts of interest they may have in relation to any item on the agenda. Okay, I move that the Regs Committee approves the, min approve the minutes of the committee meeting held on 30 March 2021. Having been circulated, they be taken as read and confirmed as an accurate record of that meeting. Do I have a seconder, please? Thank you. Deputy Mayor Free, and you and I were the only ones actually there in person. Everyone else was um, on Zoom, and as it turned out, it was only a four minute meeting anyway. Right. Right, the motion has been moved, seconded. Please vote accordingly. Thank you, that is carried. There are no items not on the agenda. And one other item I need to um, mention before we carry on is wishing Councillor Condi a very happy birthday. <laughs> right. We will sing to you later. Don't want to do that while we're being live streamed. <laughs> okay, we have five public participants this morning, starting with Patrick Morgan, who is well known to us from the Cycling Action Network, and you know the drill, Patrick. Ten minutes, including question time. Over to you. Speaking on just on Arthur Street or more than that? No. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Jill. Um, good morning, councillors. Uh, lovely to see you all here. Today is about leadership. It's about rebuilding credibility in the council's commitment to cycling and road safety. And it's also about how we take care of each other. So first of all, I'd like to introduce you to Katie Benson, first time at council. Uh, she's got a few thoughts on the matter. Thank you. Um, Morena, everybody. Um, thank you. As you can see, new to council, new to all the high tech gear. Um, yeah, so I was a little bit nervous about presenting today. Uh, it's the first time for the city council, but I was very motivated to do so because I've got an opportunity to push for a change to uh, a cycle route that actually affects me because it's something that I would use to get from my home into town. Um, and yeah, I want to say first of all that I really enjoy the cycleway along Hut Road. Um, I really do like using it. It's very pleasant and very calm to use. But then I get to Thornton Quay um, and things, yeah, the character of my cycle ride changes a little bit. Um, and uh, yes, yeah, the kind of thing that makes me actually less likely to use that cycle way. Um, and I'd like to use it more often than I do now. Um, so when I do get to Thornton Quay on my bicycle, as you probably know, um, I get greeted by a lot of angled parking um, where there are many vehicles parked along that road. Um, and I guess the parking wasn't necessarily designed for the size um, of vehicles that we tend to have parked along there. So they often kind of 
right out in the road, so I feel like quite, like quite cramped. There's not that much space um, for cyclists. And I also have to be in this kind of hyper-vigilant state at all times. I'm used to being aware, of course, when I'm cycling, but it's like an extra level, I think, when I'm cycling along Thorndon Quay. I'm just presuming that... Sorry. Sorry to butt in. Are we... Is this the Arthur Street... Patrick, or are, we, are you presenting the petition at this point, just to for, cla for it's clarification? In the, um, the petition on Thorndon Key, 389 signatures. Okay, at this stage? Correct. Right, yep. okay, because... Um, okay, yeah, we'll, we'll proceed on that basis. My understanding was you were talking about Arthur Street at this stage, then we had various public participants, and then later you were going to be presenting the e-petition, but if you want to go ahead... Do you mind if, do you mind if we keep going now? On, on this one, for leave of the. Oh, it's, it's up to you, Chair. We can we can switch if you want. Uh, okay, yeah. Just just so we know where you, you know what's happening right now. So this is the e petition. Correct. Right. Okay. Thank you for clarifying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorry for mixing things up a little bit. Should I continue? Lovely. Um, Yes, so the angle parking um, makes me feel like there's not really enough space for cyclists there, and it's probably also quite stressful for drivers to use. Um, I just, I was coming through on the bus this morning, rather on my bike, because I'm nervous about cycling on Thorndon Quay, um, and a car started reversing even when the bus was about to pass. So if a, if a, if a driver can't see or doesn't notice a bus about to go past it when they're pulling out, I really doubt they're going to always be looking for a cyclist. So that's an extra worry for me. Um, and also when I am reacting to cars that are about to pull out, I'm then moving into the live traffic lane and I'm nervous about the traffic coming past me. Um, so I feel like, yeah, generally there's a lack of space. Um, so today I'm asking for a, in the short term, a change to that parking. So we move away from it being angled. Um, so that we've got more space for cyclists um, and also hopefully a less stressful experience for people parking there. Um, but in the longer term, what I'm looking for is a proper protected bike lane like I'm used to on the rest of Putt Road, and I know it's coming along the line, but I'd really like to see that coming quite soon. Um, but yeah, that's my experience as someone who cycles along Thornton Quay and gets quite nervous about it. So thank you for listening. Okay, um, I mean, I could have, we could have brought a whole bunch of people here to tell a similar story, but um, I think you get the point. I think we should accept that this is a really unsafe road for people on bikes. It's also really tricky to use if you're driving, to use those angle parks, because visibility is, it's really a problem. Um, and I also hear from drivers who say they hate parking there on those angled parks. Um, I'd like to acknowledge at this point um, the work that your staff have done on this over 20 years to get changes. I know you've lost staff over their frustration here. Let's not let that happen again. Uh, thank you to councillors who have um, kept this issue alive over the years too, and particularly Sarah for encouraging us to, to bring this petition of 389 people. Initially I thought, really, do we have to go through this again? It's exhausting, we've been here many times, and I expect we'll have to go through this again when traffic resolutions come up, and again, when Let's Get Wellington moving um, finally gets around to, to making a move on this. Um, yeah, I want to acknowledge our volunteers for sticking with us. It's really hard to persuade them to come back again and again. Um, we feel like Charlie Brown and Lucy, where the, she says, kick the football, Charlie Brown. This time I'm gonna hold it, and she pulls it away. Um, today that's gonna change, because I think um, you've indicated your commitment to really keeping, keeping the council's promise to fix this. So I'm looking forward to your questions at this point. We have from, from Councillor Day already. Uh, kia ora kōrua. thank you very much for coming in and um, I completely agree, your personal experience matches mine. Um, so some people are saying we should just make the clear way, um, a clear way on the um, north um, exit from the city to fix the problem. Do you think that's enough? Um, I, I don't think it's necessarily going to be enough because even like this morning again I was on the bus before 9am and cars were parked even though the clearway was in effect um, so I think there would need to be something more drastic than that to actually yeah, generally make, make it feel like there's space for cyclists Yeah I mean today is about um, moving forward on changing the parking uh, we do want protected proper bike lane along this essential route but um, that's where we're heading later in the year
Also, people on bikes take trips all times of day. It's um, let's not over-focus on the commute trip. If we do that, we pay more attention to the trips that people like, look like me make. Let's think about the trips that everyone in our community wants to make. All right, I, I, I have a question and I mean, obviously the idea, okay, I've got a couple of questions and this is one, the, the answer is going to be pretty obvious, but <clears throat> the idea would be to see in place the proposed cycleway at the back of the retail um, centre, wouldn't it? So it's completely away from the roadway itself. That's my first question. But you're... Yeah, I, I tend not to agree. I think um, the retailers, businesses, occupants of Thorn and Key deserve to access their customers directly. Um, this, is, this is not about getting cyclists off the road so we can uh, prioritise everyone else on the road. This is about a complete street that works for everyone. So generally, um, the desire line where people want to ride is that main arterial route. And, you know, the council's own parking policy has really confirmed this, that arterial routes for, um, for moving people and goods. So I'd resist any temptation to um, divert people on bikes to an alternative route. I also think council staff have explored that before and it hasn't really got to anywhere. I think you'll find Kiwi Rail are really reluctant to um, give away any of the space they need for operating the yards. Well, my second question at this point, Patrick, is um, how, how do we respond to the retailers are very concerned about the proposed loss of possibly 130 parking spaces, which in the overall scheme of things is a, is a substantial money. They are very concerned about the um, possible loss of business as a result of that. Sure, and if I was a retailer, I would be, um, I would be saying the same things. I note there's 29,000 on-street car parks in Wellington downtown, plus the off-street parking. So firstly, it's a very small fraction of that. Secondly, we looked at the council's own numbers. Uh, my colleague David Tripp had a good look at the council data and found out that even at peak demand, there's vacant space on Thorndon Key all day long. Um, even if we took one side of the parking out completely, there would still be vacant space for parking. So I think those fears are, are unfounded. I also note that people on bikes, um, or as we call them, wallets on wheels, also like to spend money. They're more likely to stop and shop. So uh, if I was a retailer, I'd be welcoming these kind of changes as being a great boost for business. However, I, I do acknowledge that change is hard and that council will need to tell the story really carefully about what is proposed, how it affects people, and how we can um, you know, make the most of the positive changes here. It's a great question. I know you'll be fielding that plenty times more. Mm. Council oh, Sorry, just one more thing. Um, you know, even if parking was, was needed here for retailers, I do think that public safety trumps the convenience of parking right outside a store. Mm. Councillor Pennant. Thank you, Malcolm. Just a really quick question. We've had a, uh, an argument made that removing angle parking won't really do much to help cyclists. What's your response? Um, well, you've heard from Katie. I, again, I could bring a parade of people who would say, it's, actually it will. It provides more safe space for people on bikes. It also removes that really dangerous manoeuvre where people are trying to access or get out of car parks on an angle. Um, I know, Malcolm, you, you had a look there uh, yesterday. You might have noticed some people, for example, coming in one direction, pulling right across the road to jump into the angle park. It's a horror move because Typically, riders can't see that coming. Um, their vision is often obscured by other vehicles, and it's one of the leading causes of those, those crashes. So let's make things easier for people who drive and bike. Deputy Mayor Free. I was just going to say, um, uh, just to check again, that your view is this is a really worthwhile thing to do, regardless of what might further improvements that might be down the track, that you'd like to see this happen really Promptly, now Absolutely. We've got to this point. Um, and you've seen Waka Kotahi's audit reports from 2015 and again last year. Um, I really note how strong their language is. Usually, these documents, they're written in a very, uh, how do I put it? They're much more guarded in how they, how, how they um, say what needs to happen. This one is extremely direct, it's, it's the most direct I've ever seen. 
Um, so regardless of what happens with Let's Get Wellington moving, that could be two, three years away. Uh, I don't think we can stand by and expose people to this risk for a day longer. I'd do it today if I could. Okay, th thank you very much for that. One thing when I um, had a look there yesterday morning that did surprise me, if you like, is that the my understanding is that there is clear way there between 9 a.m. and, s sorry, 7 a.m. and 9 a.m. on the left side of the road as you're heading into town, and yet at 10 to 9 there were at least five vehicles in a, in a given section, there were five vehicles parked there at that stage. So we did receive correspondence, I don't know if from you, Patrick, or whoever, indicating that uh, enforcement was a wee bit lax in the area and perhaps that's something in the um, immediate future we need to be following through on. Sure, thanks for going down and having a look. That's been our experience. I understand that parking staff, God bless them, they, they do you know heroic work there. They have a few policies about how soon before the clearway ends they can issue infringement tickets. I think it's around 10 minutes. <coughs> Effectively, people know this, they game the system. Unfortunately, it creates a risk that need not be there. You probably also noticed a bit of green paint on Thorndon Quay. Uh, some people mistake that for some kind of bike lane. It has no legal meaning, it's just advisory. And unfortunately, it leads people sometimes to ride in a dangerous position on the road, leading to crashes. I heard from someone this morning who had that. So. We need to fix it up. We're not going to do everything today, but today I invite you to get the ball rolling on the traffic resolutions. It'll come back again for public engagement to make this necessary change. Thank you. Thank you to the both of you for coming and speaking to us. No, perfect. Okay. At this stage, I will um, move the motion, which is that we receive the information and thank the petitioner. Seconder for this motion, please. Uh, okay. We'll come back to that later. <laughs> right. Sorry for messing up the order of the agenda. I hadn't noticed that. Okay. Yeah, well, we can adapt. Right. Okay. Thank you. Right. Next um, public participant, welcome to Alan Blake, Living Streets Aotearoa, speaking on various traffic resolutions. Over to you, Alan. Kia ora tato. Um, ko Alan Blake, a whole ko kai tui tui of uh, uh, Living Streets out here or Kia Fonganui Atara. Um, and I'm, yes, I am talking about the traffic resolution. Sorry to get back to the um, nuts and bolts of things, folks, but it's a really important. Um, uh, part of the process, as you know, and it's one of those things that has, holds up a whole lot of changes for the for the good. So I hope that you also can show some leadership on supporting um, good traffic resolution. Um, so I've, I just want to quickly touch on the Willowbank Road one. We Living Streets doesn't normally um, support anything that says shared path because they don't work, but this is a very short access way to the um, uh, railway station. So. We, we do support this, and I think it's, it's really going to have other vehicles in it, so perhaps a shared zone is more appropriate for this um, uh, classification. That's, it will be good. Uh, I mostly wanted to talk about Arthur Street um, traffic resolution. So this is uh, Arthur Street, as you probably know, is the area where all the school kids wander through to high school, to um, Wellington Boys, to Wellington East, and backwards and forwards into some of those um, primary schools there. When I was at school, we walked along Arthur Street and there was a footpath. We don't have a footpath anymore. We've got some uh, rather unusual arrangement that's called a shared zone. And it's, it's, as I understand it, it's a 50 kilometre an hour shared zone, totally inappropriate for any children, for any pedestrian to ever have to walk along an area like that. So the, when the, the deal was when this bit of road um, got changed and you know became an extension of Caro Drive, um, was that we was the pedestrians were supposed to be able to walk through this this um, small bit from the six lane crossing at Taranaki Street to the very slow crossing on Cuba. Um, safely, and there's, there's a lot of children that walk through here. Um, so 
but what's happened over time is that, that some, for some reason parking's been allowed to, to go over the bit that's supposed to be specifically for walking along. So this traffic resolution it seeks to fix that. So I just totally endorse that this goes ahead and there is absolutely no reason to um, not approve it because of safety alone. Um, we'd definitely like to see this area have a 10 kilometre an hour speed limit, which is still twice as fast as walking. Um, and we'd like to make sure that the signs indicate that pedestrians are allowed to walk both ways and are entirely permitted to be in this area where normally there is no sign that says people walking are allowed in, in places. It's all about vehicles. So multimodal thinking, please. Let's stop doing this single mode stuff. Um, it's time for time for a bit of change and a bit of common sense on this. Thank you very much. Right, questions for Alan. Councillor Pennett. Um, Councillor Sparrow, am I allowed to ask a question about another resolution which has been withdrawn of the submitter? Oh, <laughs> I was just... I just I've just noticed that yeah. the, um, there's a there's been a resolution withdrawn for a shared uh, car parking space on Elizabeth Street. Just wondered if you had any view. Haven't even seen that. One. Just wondered mm. if you had any view about whether um, having car share spaces is actually no. really important in our community, it's so that so that we don't need so much parking for private cars. I don't think sharing um, walking space with cars is a good idea at all. It's a very bad idea. No, sorry, it's a it's a, a car parking. A space which be spe which be specifically allocated on the road for car parking, for a shared car parking scheme. Oh, you mean as in um, one of those higher vehicles? Yeah, 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 yeah. No, the shared thing is no, is, not, um, not, on the, not on not not on the paper. No, not on the, the paper. higher vehicles like Mevo and stuff. Like yeah, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, um, I don't think there'd be. It depends on where it is, of course, but I don't think it's a problem with that. Okay, thank you. Not sure why, what that's about. <laughs> okay, thank you very much for that, Alan. There look to be no further questions, so thank you for taking the time to come in. Right, now I'd like to welcome Doug Brennan from Southern Plumbing speaking to us on Arthur Street. You have 10 minutes, Doug, and in that time, if you want to allow questions within the 10 minutes. Uh, good morning, thank you. Uh, I'm here representing Arthur Street Limited, the Brennan Trustees Limited, Southern Plumbing Gas Filling Limited, WebSense Limited. I'm a director of all those companies and they reside at 19 Arthur Street, Units 1, 7 and 8. Uh, yes, I did cycle here this morning um, and I've owned that cycle for 50 years. It's an old racing bike. I keep it at, at work. I use it for quoting jobs in the city. So I'm, I'm, I'm as pro-cycling as I am a business owner in the street. Um, it's, it's an interesting development, this street, because it's uh, somewhat unique in that it has uh, a shared space on one side and a dedicated walking and cycling on the other side, put there by a former mayor, uh, specific for walking and cycling. Um, on the original proposal, there wasn't a single mention of any assessment as to the impact on businesses. That in itself is a bit of an indictment for the City Council. And one wonders if you have any um, <coughs> any desire to determine that impact at all for businesses in the city. The street's gone through enormous transformation, as the President submitted said. It used to have two footpaths dedicated, and it had two complete lanes of parking down both sides of the street, from, from Taranaki all the way to Cuba Street. And the changes have actually made it worse. And we warned Transit about that before they, well, while they were in progress. They asked us for a submission halfway through the construction. Uh, for circular engineering, it's, it's not better. And putting cobbles in doesn't always, doesn't always make it a good idea. It's not a 50 kilometre hour zone. I mean, if you're in the street driving down there, you're walking, sorry, you're driving behind a pedestrian uh, at walking speed. That's the, that's the speed of traffic in, this, in, that, in that space. It's a busy street now because of all the things managed that have gone into the area. The um, park across by the tunnel, uh, university accommodation and so on. It's a busy street now. Um, if the road is blocked due to trucks, which is common, and yesterday, for instance, two trucks blocked the street for half an hour, people aren't waiting. They're driving back the other way. And that's not a problem because people drive pretty carefully back the other way. Those, those trucks would be illegal under this proposal now. 
Uh, I'm not here to talk about the 60 minute parking or the handicap parking because those things already exist. The loss of five more car parks to the 17 that have already gone is not really relevant to me. But I can see you've got a problem on the left hand side of the street where people park all day. That's a problem for me also because I mean my service vehicles, they can't stop either. Um, when the engineers turned up uh, to meet the residents, <laughs> it's kind of interesting actually because as soon as they turn up in their, in their vest, bright vest, the doors all bang, 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 all opened up and all these people poured out, so I surrounded them. Um, but interestingly, um, I made them watch the, the cars coming into the street, each one they came in. And the cars actually travelled right through the street, they didn't stop. And these are people that are circulating looking for a car park. And in itself, that is in itself a hazard. So in other words, the very loss of parking is actually causing a hazard to pedestrians. Um, with the engineers, they were actually forced to park in a park that you're now thinking of getting rid of. Now, if you want to live the, live the dream, then I suggest that you buy them bikes. Um, live live that, that moment. Um, it might be funny, but it's actually not funny for us having hatch lines down there. I mean, are they really suggesting that a 16 metre truck with a high on it, high abs goods across from the other side of the street to the business on the other side? That's not really workable. That's not a realistic option. The hatch lines are really what we were talking about here today, because those mean not just no parking, they mean no stopping. And that's pretty draconian for businesses on that side of the street, which employs about 100 people and hundreds access those businesses every day. The loading zones won't do it. Um, you could make them service vehicle parks because there's a lot of service vehicles in the area that access those businesses. Um, the zoning, I want to talk about zoning for a minute um, because it's an interesting one for you. When the earthquakes happened in Wellington and Thornden, a commercial building was demolished and you, you identified that someone was using a commercial zone building for residential and you took them to the task over that. So now the boot's the other way around. We're a commercially zoned street with warehousing as a zoning, and you're changing the access to the, to the commercial zone properties. So now I'm asking you to, to actually live the zone you've set. We're somewhat, we're somewhat um, discriminated against as businesses in, in the city, where in this particular street you're proposing no stopping. In Cuba Mall, you can drive a vehicle down there as a service vehicle and stop and access those buildings. In our street, you're saying no stopping at all. I don't know how you're going to work that out. It's not, it's not simple to drop materials off to a business that you can't actually park at. And the engineers, they saw that street was fully parked the whole time that they were there. There were no, there were no spaces in that street. And if there ever are any spaces, it's quickly taken up by the people circulating, looking for a car park in that area. We don't get, we don't get preferential residence zones parking, as you do in Thorndon, and yet we pay three times the rates for a commercial business and we get no recycling and water rates on top of that. And for that now you want to penalise the businesses in the street by making sure we can't stop outside the, vehicle, the business drop dropping off. That's pretty tough. If you drive the businesses out of the street into places like Naranga, Gorge or some of those other commercial areas, we're now back in, driving back into the city on roads that are already fully congested. I would suggest that you provide parking in the city for commercial vehicles at least to stop for at least five or 10 minutes, drop things off. Some of the vehicles that drop things off to our business are 16 metres long. In fact, when Transit originally designed the street, the truck couldn't even get into the street because the, 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 the type of access, they couldn't turn right. So we had to have a rumble strip installed to actually get the truck into the street. Uh, it is a commercial street and unfortunately, the way it's designed with the cobbles, it resembles a mall which encouraged people to walk down it. And so you've got that conf conflict of pedestrians, cyclists, electric scooters, electric bikes, cars, it's, it's just, it's being overloaded. So what my recommendation is, is shift the pedestrians and cyclists to the other side of the street. We've got dedicated access, there's no businesses there that are open currently, there's no vehicles parking. I mean, Transit could have put parking down that side of the street, but they didn't, because your man, Mayor Wade Brown got rid of all that and dedicated that side of the street for walking and cycling. Um, in the original proposal, um, you had a, a clause in there which has been deleted in the latest one where the council had a view and this is sort of a, talking at more of a higher level now about parking generally in the city um, where I'm going to give you, a, I've been in business since I was 15, okay, I've come from a very strong business family. You're fighting against the flow with parking. Your customers are rate payers and they're wanting to hop in their car, sit in the traffic path now and drive into the city and you're saying that you don't want them parking in the city. That's fair. Uh, one of them have a more like feel. 
But you're, it's a bit like Megan and customers coming to me saying, I want bathrooms, and I say, no, you can't have them. Or you can have the bathroom without the toilet. My daughter points out to me that she's building a house in Island Bay, let me money, money rate payers. She says that the bus fare is higher than hiring a car park in the city. So you're really fighting against that natural flow. And I can tell you as a business owner, don't, don't look at customer in the, in, 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 don't fight the customer's demand, it's impossible. It's like prohibition, you won't, fight, you won't, you won't win. Um, if that is demand, somebody build car parking buildings, the council's short of money, charge them $6 a day to park there, but shift them outside the area you want the car parks to be, to be lost. If you want to take car parks out, fine, but put the car parks better out, get them to walk in, and make some money in, uh, in, into the bargain. Um, as a business owner, I've, I've been in business a long time, and I own multiple businesses, but to fight a customer demand is impossible. You, you can't say no, you've got to provide what they want, otherwise they won't hire you. You are in business, actually, although you call yourself councillors, you're actually directors of a business. You're providing service the same as I am. You're no different. But to fight it is just too hard. And I, think, I think you actually have to buy the, car, the parking buildings and charge them a fee. That's how you'll, that's how you'll provide it. But I mean, it's, it's, it's a tough one. I mean, uh, how are you, no one's actually mentioned the cost of the rate payers of providing light rail and their rates. They're not, no one's coming up with that number. But it's frightening. I think uh, if you want to overcome the problem, then provide the parking buildings, and then this street will empty out. In this proposal, precisely, my recommendation here would be on the left side of the street, which is the southern side, put 15 minute car parks in there, and that will stop the all day parkers. I want that too, because I can, my service would cannot park in that street. They're going to park in Abel Smith Street at, a, at another business to walk across and bring goods with them, carry them. Uh, it's a pretty tough. Thank you, Doug. Um, we have a minute left for questions. Councillor Condy. Thank you for coming in today. Um, I just wanted, uh, um, our staff, when they went out, they did a parking survey to look at the licence plates of what kind of vehicles were parking there. And what they found was across those parking surveys that a number of licence plates came up again and again, which indicates that it was more likely to be employees parking there for, for most of the day rather than um, yeah. customer turnover parking. Because in terms of our priorities for our parking policy, we prioritise short-stay customer parking over long-stay commuter parking. So I just wondered if you had a view on that in terms of your experience of the street. Yeah. I mean, some businesses do abuse the situation. I won't mention any names, but one business in the street at 7.30 in the morning, they have a big customer base as we do. Our customer base is something like uh, 26,000 of your rate bars. Um, they exit all the cars out of your business and park them all the way along that street. That's no good for me either. Um, that is a park enforcement issue. It's an employment matter, isn't it, for your own parking wardens that you get out there and police that street pretty tough. The catch is with the one-hour park, what they do is they watch those car parks all day and they rub off the chalk or they shift the cars around to overcome the problem. Um, and they also park on the left-hand side as well uh, all day. And that's a problem for me also. I don't want that either. Um, but but I, there is a suit solution to it, and that's to police it much more heavily, or restricted to say 30 minute car parks. There's, there's got to be some sort of proactive idea to overcome the problem. Uh, I see all the, that one business affects all the businesses in the street. Because we, we can't, most of our businesses in the street are all service businesses. We've got customers coming to and fro all day long, and they can't park there either. So it's a, it's a, it's a problem, it's a management issue. Yeah. All right, thank you very much for that. Doug, we have run out of time. Thank you for your perspective and some very um, pertinent points. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to invite to the table um, Tom Benion speaking on the e-petition. Yep. You have five minutes and... <laughs> you want any questions allowed with... Right. Sorry about that. Okay, thank you. Okay. Kia ora, good morning everyone. Sorry about that introduction. Um, I brought some slides. Husband, three kids, lawyer, small business owner, cycle commuter from the hut for 20 years, probably the, one of the first e-bike commuters from the last nine years when I had my battery um, in a uh, warehouse Mitre 10 toolbox on the back of, on the carrier on my bike. That's how these things started. Um, okay, so... 
That's me, uh, also wallet on wheels. I'm a lawyer on a bike. Uh, I'm a trip spreader. I don't come in on the commute time. I come in at all sorts of hours. Go home at all sorts of interesting hours too on the <laughs> motorway. Um, so <laughs> on the cycle lanes, Thorndon Key, um, just to know that as Patrick said, I think that at that northern end, I mean, they are just they're they're actually um, unusable. Always have been. You, you don't go anywhere near <laughs> those green lines. You can see with those short cars there, um, you, you you just wouldn't be in that, that shaded space at the back of those cars. Never have been in 20 years. And um, with longer vehicles, which I'll come to now, it gets even worse. So the other thing that's happening that we're all noticing as cyclists is that the Utes and the big SUVs and the big family vehicles, they're longer, they're also higher, you just can't see, they can't see. Um, this is, the angle park is now becoming a critical safety issue with these bigger vehicles. Another cost of these goddamn utes. <laughs> but anyway, um, very interested in the Waka Kotahi assessment telling you that it's inherently unsafe for cyclists. That raises a legal issue, I think. Also, very interested in this comment about the resistance from local retailers to the loss of parking. My thought on that is, I think there are two reasons why retailer desire to maximise parking must never be balanced against safety where you would have an inherently unsafe street. The first is that retailers by law within their businesses, including myself and yourselves, have to maintain safety standards where you eliminate risk or uh, minimise it if you can't eliminate it. You can't have a different standard outside the very doors of your business. Look at the cycle in that picture. The cyclist is expected by the owner of, say, that business to come down an inherently unsafe street and then step inside a building that has full health and safety running. That cannot be the expectation of businesses. I would be horrified if people coming to my business to have an interview with me about a legal matter and I was pushing to have them do that on an unsafe street. It doesn't make any sense. The other thing too is that you prevent innovation. There are businesses, including I'm assuming plumbing businesses, that will want to do cargo biking. It's a growing trend in cities overseas. Employers are going to say, I can't put that, my employer, on a in a situation like that on an inherently unsafe street. I might be legally unable to do it. So why you must act immediately? I see from the um, papers that it says you're going to get something done in about 625 days from now. Each of the dots is 400 trips. This is outside of commuting time. So let's really conservatively say 400 trips for 625 days. That's a quarter of a million incidents. We don't want the coroner saying, why did you allow a quarter of a million potential accidents to happen? So I think you do have a legal risk. And, uh, Contrary to what your supporting information says, I think you've got a legal risk. I think you've got a climate change impact. You want to be encouraging in, in innovation. And I think you do have a health and safety risk here right now as well. So thanks. Questions, if there are any. Thank you for that. Very concise. There being no questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tom. I'd like to invite um, David Tripp to the table, Doctors for Safe Public Transport, speaking on the e-petition. Welcome, David. Uh, kia ora, mā te atua tātou katau e arahi. I'm David Tripp from Doctors for Active Safe Transport. Uh, we were a collective of over 100 doctors at Wellington Hospital that are tired of being the ambulance at the bottom of the cliff. Uh, you are the fence at the top. I want to restate the why. I've, do I, I push a button here? Yeah. Uh, this is not about an us versus them. This is about all of us. Uh, studies consistently tell us that active transport, in this case cycling, is dramatically beneficial for our health. Uh, the bastion of all the good things, British Medi Medical Journal, a couple of years ago said, in a large study of people who cycled who, versus those who didn't, all-cause mortality dropped by 41%, cancer by 45%, cardiovascular disease by 46%. This is better than any pill in my arsenal. So, lives depend on getting a safe and connected 
cycling network around Wellington. So that's my why. Can we talk about Thorndon Key? This is data that we presented to your last consultation in 2000 and beginning of 2018. At that point, cyclists it were around 2% of road users. It's actually gone up a bit. Cyclists were involved in 23% of the accidents. And of people who were injured in accidents on that road, 44% were cyclists. This is Wellington's busiest cycle route. I have no alternative on my commute into Wellington by bike. And I'm angry. This is not an accident waiting to happen. This is an accident that has already happened time and time again and again and again and again and again. You have consulted on this four times over 20 years, and it persists. So I will say it is currently council policy to knowingly subject cyclists to sustained and serious harm. I'll repeat that. It is currently council policy to knowingly subject cyclists to sustained and serious harm. Um, I don't think that's acceptable, and so we ask it to change again. Please don't kick the can down the road again. Part of my energy for this is it's personal. <laughs> that's me on the ground. This was further upstream on Hutt Road when I hit a post in the middle of the cycle path uh, it was unsafe cycle infrastructure. That is an MRI of my spine. Uh, the four marked vertebrae are all broken. The line down the back is my spinal cord. This is the risk every day on your busiest cycle path. Parking's an issue, I get that. <laughs> what does my spine matter? But let's talk about parking. We did the analysis in the 2018 uh, consultation. If you took all the P120 parking from Davis Street to Tinakori Road, that whole stretch, the red line is parking occupancy through the day uh, on business days. We took out public holidays, we did it well. Uh, what it showed is that parking occupancy on average at your peak time of day was a smidge over 40%. So I would say that council is dramatically over investing in, car in parking on Thorndon Quay. The green line was just a thought experiment. If you took out all the seaward side uh, parking, which is currently a the, the clear way in the morning, and left everyone to park in what was left, what would parking occupancy look like? And actually, it still never got above 70%. Now, anyone else anywhere else in Wellington would kill to have council provide such overabundance of parking to the point where at peak times, 30% of your car parks were still empty. Council decided to make no change and leave hundreds of cyclists facing a daily risk of serious harm that remains your policy. And i just like to say, hey guys, we can all do a whole lot better than that. In fact, you've got a win-win here because actually you can do the right thing without too much collateral damage because there's plenty of parking anyway. I mean, <coughs> I mean, like, you know, Newtown, it's gonna be a, 
hard yards. I get that, but uh, this was a gift. Yeah. Uh, I'm very sorry that you didn't accept the gift at the time uh, and would love you to do that now. Yeah, that's what I would like to say. Thank you for your time. <laughs> Thank you very much for that, David. I have a question, yeah. and that is if we, I can fully appreciate having looked at it yesterday and living in a community where there's lots of angle parking on the main road, mm. that um, angle parking is not ideal by any means, mm. well, that's understating it, obviously, for cyclists, but parallel parking, that's still not going to make it completely safe for cyclists, is it? No, no, but it's a dramatic step in the right direction. Uh, yes, th th there's a lot to be done on what is a key transport uh, route for public transport, for cyclists, for freight, for people, uh, uh, in accordance with your, policy, your council's own policies about parking. Uh, you've got a long way to go. Uh, the onus is on you. You've committed to that. Uh, but give me parallel parking over angle parking any day. I have a friend who calls that suicide alley. Uh, you know, we, sh we shouldn't be offering that to our cyclists in our city. Now, having said that, yes, protected cycle lane, please. It's got to come. It is the arterial route into Wellington from the north. We hope to have thousands of cyclists a day using it, particularly when the cycle path from Batoni to Naronga comes on stream. Bring it on. That's be a great day for Wellington. Uh, but small steps, you've got to take some. Councillor Pannett and then Councillor Day. Um, thank you very much for your continued advocacy because <laughs> you keep doing it. Um, I'm a regular customer down there, but I'm a bus user and a pedestrian. Mm -hmm. I presume any cycling improvements would also um, include be able to include um, uh, safety for pedestrians as well, like even just crossing the roads quite well, difficult. Uh, Absolutely. Uh, now you've kicked that can into let's get Wally moving. Um, I'd recommend you ask them what they're planning. We don't know. Uh, but certainly it's, it's, it's a great place for pedestrians. I'm one of the wallets on wheels. I stop at the bakery down there sometimes on my way to work. Uh, they get my money as I cycle past. I'm sure pedestrians will want to do the same thing. Um, yeah, uh, there, there's plenty of space. Uh, for all those things, for the win-win, if you would stop chaining yourself to every car park on Thorndon Quay, which is what Council has done. Councillor Day. Um, kia ora, thank you very much for coming in and um, sharing your experience. It's um, been a personal experience of mine of uh, being scared biking through there. Um, but I'm just wondering for non-cyclists if you can explain the difference between why parallel angle parking is so significant? Uh, I... I <laughs> You ask your traffic engineers, but I'll give you two two points in mind. One is the vehicles stick a long way out into the road and force me into the lane. I have to tangle with double-storey buses to stay safe. Uh, like, that's not safe. Uh, and secondly, I have the experience parking down Thorndon Quay, as I sometimes do. When you pull out of a park, you cannot see what's coming until you are blocking the road. Until you have hit the cyclist, you don't know they're there. Compare that with any manoeuvre when you're parallel parking, where as you park and as you pull out, you have a clear view behind you. It's not ideal. This is Wellington's busiest arterial route for cyclists. We do need dedicated cycle infrastructure. But for the moment, please, please, can you uh, s change council policy from one which knowingly injures cyclists regularly? Thank, thank you very much for sharing your expertise with us, David. <coughs> Patrick, you were originally scheduled to present to us on, um, or speak to us on Arthur Street. Do you wish to? You do wish to do that. <laughs> okay. You've t you have 10 minutes. Okay. You want to start? Hi everybody, thank you for the opportunity. Um, my name's Linda Beetson, I'm a regular uh, pedestrian and um, bike rider. Um, I live um, in the Arthur Street area, I live in Thompson Street, so I'm going along there um, quite often. Um, the things that I'd like to say about that is that I'm often coming from Newtown or the eastern suburbs, so I'll generally come through uh, Pukiahu uh, Park 
and then I'll cross at the um, at the crossing. And so any suggestion that I should cross State Highway 1 to go on the other side and then at Cuba Street or Victoria Street, then cross State Highway 1 again to get up to my home in Thompson Street is, you know, fairly um, inconvenient. You know, we always talk about um, convenient, um, connected and comfortable, and um, that suggestion is um, kind of none of those things. So I'm regularly coming along um, Arthur Street, and um, so on the right-hand side there's kind of little cutouts and um, parking that's regular parking, and then on the left-hand side that is um, people have assumed to be parking and regularly park there is not actually um, dedicated as parking, um, but it is the space that people are expected to initially were expected to walk along. Um, so it's pretty confusing if you go along there on a bike and then you find that there's a vehicle behind you and there's people walking towards you and there's kind of cars on either side. Um, so my suggestion would be that I appreciate that most of the businesses there are um, kind of places where customers might come with vehicles. I've taken my vehicle down there actually to be fixed at a um, place that's designed for fixing broken things on um, motor vehicles. Um, but I would suggest that obviously um, those vehicles, those um, businesses which require you know, quite a lot of service and often big trucks, that the little cutouts are taken out on the right hand side and that some of that parking which might be 60 minutes or two hours, I'm not sure what it is now, be dedicated for loading zones and for longer vehicles. Um, because trucks, of course, have to be able to get in there to service those vehicles. And that the people who are using it as just a general kind of parking place um, be forced to go and find somewhere else, um, because it is a, like a busy area. And that the people who are riding bikes and walking, like both directions, should be able to do that safely um, and shouldn't be expected to walk on the other side of the road. I mean, my experience is, even though it's more dodgy, I would you know, I'll kind of take my chances with the vehicles going both ways and people walking and stuff rather than have the inconvenience of going on the other side. Um, and um, the number of um, pedestrian movements and bicycle movements along there would suggest that many other people feel the same. So, um, yeah, I'd urge you to get rid of the irregular parking on the left-hand side and make it more convenient for the businesses who need the, like, the drop-offs and things on the, on the other side and people who want to park all day or for, you know, to go to places elsewhere can find somewhere else or perhaps travel by bus or by bike or walk. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Linda. I would just like to add, this is an essential east-west link in the cycling and walking network in our city. Um, this is really about honouring a promise. So when Cardo Drive was installed all those years ago, um, this was designated to be space for walking and cycling. Unfortunately, at the time, uh, that was, there was never a traffic resolution to make that official. Uh, we feel a promise had been made then, and now's the time to fix that. This is about credibility. Um, Again, 29,000 on-street car parks in Central City. Uh, there's lots of parking in the city, plus the off-road. In terms of this location, I really you know, respect Doug for coming here and having a say. Um, indeed, he kind of points to the solution, which is better enforcement of the parking that is there, whether that's P5s for drop-offs, and I note in the, uh, the officer's report, it doesn't mean just five minutes, it means effectively up to five minutes of an unattended uh, vehicle. So I'd submit that with the P5s and some P60 spaces on the, let me get this right, the north side of Arthur Street, there is sufficient space to operate businesses there. Again, Doug noted that, um, you know, some people are parking there all day uh, in the unpermitted space on the south side of Arthur Street. Um, my colleague James went along this morning. There's plenty of cars there with, with uh, rain on them from being there all overnight. So. I suspect, again, people are gaming the system. We can address the parking need through enforcement. Uh, but today, we want the council to, to honour the promise that this is space that is set aside for people to safely walk and cycle uh, along there. Um, yeah, also, in terms of businesses getting organising drop-offs, a 16-metre truck, the good news is that businesses are quite innovative. There are smaller trucks around that can do the job. 
and I think you'll find that um, bus businesses can adapt where, um, where they're given those options. So, yeah, let's address the parking issues through uh, the timing of those spaces and enforcement. I think I'd note there's been a, a bit of a issue between Waka Kotahi and WCC for some years about who actually controls this space. Um, it was quite hard to get an answer from anyone about whether um, this part of our network is even enforced at all. Same issue at Pukeahu. So we'll get into that another day. Um, thanks for your attention. Um, questions? Deputy Mayor Frey. I might be a bit obvious, but did you get an answer as to who controls that space? Wellington City Council. Okay, right. Okay, good. Yep. No, but in terms of enforcement as well. Yep. Yeah. Councillor Boone. Chair, um, thank you both for the presentation. Um, Linda, just if, if you being a resident of the area and and can you tell me what what is your regular or irregular use of the area and what other type of uh, pedestrians or, or users that you are seeing in that on Arthur Street? Um, I use it myself as well, but I tend to be in the commute yeah. group. Yeah, so um, in the mornings and the afternoons, there's a lot of school kids. Um, you see uh, my children go to Wellington High, but they, you know, go up our street generally. Um, but, yeah, there's a steady stream of, of people wandering along from sort of the um, Ardo Valley kind of end because um, most kids over there, well, there's a lot of kids over there who are um, going to East, um, Coal or High, so yeah, there's big yeah there's big traffic along there, and in the daytime, you know there's a lot of people going along there with you know like pushchairs and you know like smaller kind of um, children because there's there's, there's um, a Mount Cook school there Mount Cook school and there's a childcare centre in Hopper Street yeah so that's and one in on Mount Cook too yeah okay. and Mount Cook school also yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you very much, Patrick and Linda. Okay, appreciate it. Yeah, just note, this is not, this is about uh, really doing something the council said they'd do all along. We're not really asking for a change, just asking for the council to keep its word. Thank you. Thank you. We're so close to 10.30, I think we'll have a break at this point and come back at 13 minutes is long enough at 10.40.
Very right. <laughs> okay, we are on to the e-petition now. We have had Patrick speak to us about this, and at this point, I think I am just simply moving. I know we have an amendment coming, but I am moving the substantive, that, um, which is that we receive the information and thank the petitioner. I'm not sure that he's still here. Oh, he is, right. Yep, thank you, Patrick. Um, a seconder for this, please. Oh, someone who's not going to be involved in the amendment. Um, yeah, thank you, Councillor Matthews. Right, is there any debate? And this is the opportunity for Deputy Mayor Free to put forward her yeah. amendment. So, um, yes, I would like to. What about the seconder and the introducer? But anyway, I'll leap into it. Do you right, speak yeah. to the paper? We'll backtrack a moment. Um, anyone want to speak? on the substantive at this point, before we go to the amendment. Um, so look, I am really pleased that we're here. Um, I do have an amendment. I um, thank Patrick and um, Cycle Wellington and all the other advocates that have spent so ma many years um, trying to make our city safer for cycling. And I know that Thorndon Key, as has been pointed out, there have been many attempts to make this safer. Um, and the most recent one is, um, let's get Wally moving and that whole process to try and get better public transport and better cycling, better and safer cycling and walking down there. Um, but I've come to the conclusion that, and I'm sure I'm joined with others, that we cannot necessarily afford to wait for Let's Get Wally moving to make some improvements. So I thank um, all of those people, the 398 people who signed, um, for actually sharpening our focus on this um, to the point where I think we are resolved that something does need to improve. So my amendment um, acknowledges that there is a process around the timing. The process that's envisaged by officers at the moment is that um, the traffic resolution process to turn the angle parking to parallel parking will be consulted on at the same time as options for um, Thornton Key, which will come as part of Let's Get Welly Moving. But as we know, Let's Get Welly Moving um, has been a long process, and I don't think any of us want to see our res traffic resolution process delayed if that should be delayed. So my, my amendment just says, should there be any delays to that time frame, which is the consultation starting in early May, our traffic resolution process will continue regardless. And we're looking for an early paper. The earliest it could be would be the 27th of June. That would be if um, the consultation the results of the consultation are fairly straightforward. Um, if that can't happen, of course we've got our recess in July, but it would be no later than August, and we'd also, I think, be looking for some early implementation. So all of these things do take um, staff effort and time, and traffic resolutions are actually not a straightforward process. Um, otherwise, we would be snapping our fingers and demanding it sooner. But this, I think, does make it quite clear that we are determined to see a conclusion to this and a resolution, if at all possible. Um, do I have a seconder? And I have a seconder, Terry. Thank you, Terry. Councillor O'Neill, do you wish to speak at this point? Thank you, councillors. I am really excited to be able, well, not excited, but you know. Um, <laughs> I'm really moved by the amount of public participants that came to talk to us today about the impact of Thorndon Key and those those travel and commuter journey, journeys um, and understanding how, how important this is to many people. Um, I want to acknowledge staff and all the hard work and the, the countless times that these uh, kind of Thorndon Key improvements has come to Wellington City Council before and to acknowledge that maybe now this is the time to be um, uh, with the people that came to speak to us and recognise how diligent and enduring their activism has been um, while we've had more and more injuries and close calls in that section of the road. Today it is vital that Wellington City Council prioritises safety and so I'm really happy to um, be supporting Sarah Free with an amendment to the paper um, in recognising that. I am uh, moved in understanding and, and remembering uh, the passing of Brent Norris last year and how we rallied 
around February, and although that wasn't Thorndon Key, he travelled that road. Um, and the stories that were shared at a rainy day at Parliament and the trip that followed after it and how much um, how much people care, it's definitely been a, a really large learning experience for me because I'm out in the east um, and I can't imagine what it must be like to cycle on that road. Um, this amendment here today is about recognising the urgency. Um, it is about recognising that uh, should Let's Get Wellington Moving be delayed, that we are separating the traffic resolution to, to get to go ahead, and that is the and that is the right and appropriate thing to do, and that we're also looking forward to um, working with partners on later delivery for hopefully a protected cycle lane in that area. That's what I'll be advocating for. Um, just like to stress that as councillors, we've heard a lot from the public, but it's really important that we can't let um, big programs like Let's Get Wellington Moving and the early delivery process um, and that relationships with partner, we can't let that derail um, what community is saying to us here and right now and our responsibility is traffic resolutions. Um, I am uh, happy to support this amendment to the paper and um, uh, Lastly, we'd just like to recognise the, the shared mahi of a lot of different councillors um, and councillors before um, I, I was sitting on here, and in particular, um, councillor, uh, sorry, Deputy Mayor Free, Iona Panett, and, um, and Jill um, has also spoken about her experiences really candidly around travelling that road too. Councillor Matthews and Councillor Day. Kia ora koutou. Um, first of all, I'd like to um, thank Deputy Mayor Free for moving this amendment and, um, and uh, Councillor O'Neill for seconding and uh, Councillor Condi. I know the work that you've put into this issue as well. Um, this is, and, you know, actually the whole committee, so we all <laughs> um, have been contributing to this discussion. Um, I would also, uh, of course, uh, like to acknowledge Patrick and Cycle Wellington for their... Uh, persistence <laughs> um, in pushing this issue. Um, this has significant, uh, it's got a lot of impact for my neighbourhood and my ward, um, and I would want to thank all of those people um, from Ngaio who have contacted me to ask for this and to talk about um, the both the unsafe experiences they've had or the way it has discouraged their travel um, for them and their family members uh, that they've wanted to bike and this has been a, a major disincentive um, to do so. Um, I end that, you know, they're saying it's not the gorge that's the problem for us, it's Thorndon Key. So, you know, that's such a, an important point. Um, I did ask uh, if there was anything more urgent that we could do, if we had any other powers to do things even more quickly, and uh, the answer was no. Um, but, you know, uh, hope springs eternal. Um, it would be great to get this done this year as a good interim step to, you know, while the uh, better and safer separated cycleway um, comes to fruition. Um, I also just want to um, quickly touch on um, the climate issues because um, I may, you may have heard me talk about in, in our local community, Ngaiu Crofton Downs Residents Association, which is, we're a bit slow getting off the ground, but we have an aim to become uh, like a carbon neutral suburb. And the steps like this, which uh, will make it safer and encourage um, people who want to cycle, um, uh, to be able to do so is a really good step in helping us achieve that goal of reducing emissions in our suburb and becoming a carbon free, carbon neutral suburb eventually. <laughs> but you know, like it's something our whole community is, you know, we want to do and we're talking about ways to do that. And it's great to have the Residents Association leading that work. So anyway, <laughs> um, thanks for the petition. Um, it's my pleasure to support it. And um, thank you all colleagues. Councillor Day. Kia ora koutou. As you know, um, I'm not actually on this committee, but uh, this uh, kaupapa on the agenda um, drew me to the meeting. Um, 
I just want to um, acknowledge the submitters and um, also um, Patrick and Cycle Wellington for the time they've taken um, on this kaupapa because it's not just today, it's been um, a long journey and a journey that's um, been full of quite a bit of disappointment along the way. So hopefully we can start to turn that around a bit. Um, this is the second time that I've heard the recount of Dr Tripp's experience on um, on the Hutt Road and every time I hear it, it has the same impact because um, being a cyclist on that you can see exactly how those sorts of accidents happen but also um, just uh, talking to him um, and others before, um, the impact that um, seeing an accident like that has on um, non-cyclists is also quite a big impact that it puts other people off giving it a go when they see that. Um, I was disappointed that we didn't make progress in the latest attempt to improve safety, but I hope that that means that um, we can make it a bit faster now because um, we've learnt a few things from that and can actually just try and push through. Um, I'd like to thank Councillor Free, Councillors Free and O'Neill for bringing the amendment. Um, it's really important um, that we try and figure out a way through this to speed it up and we, as we know, Let's Get Wellington Moving does have this in its sights but we need to make sure it doesn't miss out on being dealt with quickly, as quickly as possible. So 27th of June, we need to um, be ready for some, some more support from the community to um, remind us of why this is so important. Uh, personally, um, cycling in and out, uh, when I first started cycling into the city, um, this was the scariest part to navigate. Um, and in actual fact, uh, my purchase of an electric bike was a little bit about having to bike up Ngaranga Gorge because that's not a whole lot of fun on a regular push bike. But actually, as much as anything, it was about the fact that in the fact that as a cyclist, you're really cycling amongst buses and cars and they are going fast. An electric bike gives you confidence because you can speed up if needed to get out of danger's way. Um, but we don't want Wellingtonian to have to buy e-bikes because um, they need to feel safe on our roads. Um, and I just want to acknowledge also the work that's been done, um, particularly by Dr Tripp, on analysing the parking in that area. It was really interesting, really helpful, um, and it shows us how we can support businesses um, through this process because we know that there will still be enough parking to be able to make sure that they can keep um, you know, keep going as businesses and also make this area safe for cyclists and pedestrians. So I think that there's a, there is a win-win here. Um, we can see um, a way through, um, but safety must be a priority. Um, personally, I've been observing as I cycle in and out the um, numbers on the counter um, and being quite surprised actually at how many people are cycling on um, the Hutt Road now. It has gone up quite dramatically and I'm sure that's partly because of the improvements to the Hutt Road but also e-bikes. There's many reasons but um, I know that it would go up even more if we fix this area because it is just terrifying. Um, the utility vehicles really obscure more than just the vehicle next to them. There's generally about six cars parked behind a utility vehicle or van that you can't see so you don't know if it's um if it's backing lights are on or not, you just can't see. And the green the green markings now with utility vehicles have actually now just become really dangerous because I used to think I had to follow those lines and now I've figured that if I do, I might actually be worse off. Um, so I think it's, it's also, I just want to say, um, thank you Councillor Matthews for the comment about the Nile residents and saying that it's not the gorge that's, um, that's their concern. And that says something because, you know, some of those parts are quite scary too. But yeah, it really does speak to the challenges on Thorndon um, on the Thorndon Camp area and we've got to make sure that we do this. So I'm really happy to see this amendment here. Sadly, I can't vote for it today, but I urge my colleagues to vote for it. Elder. Thank you, Councillor Day. Just following on from your comments about being drawn to this meeting because of the various items on the agenda, I am um, just a welcome, if that's the right word, to the extra councillors who are here and um, hope to see you again at some stage because we, we do have exciting issues on our agenda. We never know from one month to the next what is going to be coming up. So Second time I've come. Right. Of my own volition. Good to see you here and all on that note. Councillor Condi. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, kia ora tato. I just want to tatoko all of the comments that have come so far. I think it's, you know, this is an area that's, that's clearly really unsafe. And I think, um, you know, the impression that, that we're getting from the Waka Kotahi safety audits is of their safety engineers getting more and more insistent <laughs> the longer that nothing happens. Um, and I thought that the comment from uh, Dr. Tripp today, that, or the, or, or, no, it was um, Tom who came and said that mm. normally these are more guarded reports. They're, they're usually a little bit more bureaucratic in their tone. And this is, this is just, this is inherently unsafe. That's what it says. It's inherently unsafe for cyclists. Um, 
I think I really wanted to talk about how this this project going forward with Let's Get Wellington moving because I think this the our commitment to looking at some minor changes to the parking um, should not be seen as any anything anything other than also very enthusiastic support for major infrastructure changes through Let's Get Wellington moving along the stretch of Roge. Um, and I think you know we're we're really um, grateful and glad to be able to go hopefully going out together with Let's Get Welling moving to have these com these conversations with the community together about the short term changes that we can make to parking with a bit of paint, and what the longer term changes are going to look like with a bit more construction and concrete and oomph behind them. Um, so so you know we're very committed to to that process, and I, I'm really hopeful that that actually this. Um, this experience on Thorn and Key will help us to see how we can actually uh, work this way in partnership with Let's Get Wellington moving more often going forward, um, where there are issues where we've got minor safety gains that we might be able to make in an area where there is a major Let's Get Wellington moving project scheduled to come through, um, about how we can work together with the program so that we can support the work that they're doing that's, that's major infrastructure. Um, and looks at concrete and construction, um, but that we can look at possibly in the years while we're waiting for that to get kicked off, um, how do we, can we make minor changes with traffic resolutions and paint um, that can make these, these safety gains and just take us one more step in the right direction. Um, and it's really about how we work together with Let's Get Welly Moving to make sure that we're really joined up in how we do that, but that we are also still um, able to make minor changes when they're needed and to, to deliver safety gains. So I'm, I'm really, um, really, really supportive of this going ahead the way that it's planned. I will be working really hard to make sure that it's as successful as we can make it um, and working with the businesses to, to support that consultation because I'm really hopeful that this, the, that the model that we've got going here, we could actually roll out to other parts of Let's Get Wellington moving in the future because we know that that's a long-term project. Um, so yes, kia ora to all. Thank you, Councillor Pennett. Um, I'd also like to agree with all the comments that have been made and thank Councillor Free for her leadership on this issue. Um, and I'd just like to make a couple of points, is that we need to be accountable and um, in spite of a, a critical safety audit in 2015 in the last training, unfortunately this council did not vote for safe cycling um, here because um, I guess the dominant ideology of cars having preference was still there, and, and fortunately um, that's now be becoming becoming to be challenged, which is brilliant. And I just made that point that as a pedestrian and a bus user, my custom is not as valued as if I was driving a car. So I'm there at least twice a week, um, and it is not safe for pedestrians as well. We've talked a lot about cyclists, but it's not great for pedestrians either. And I want to let my children and other children be able to get off a bus and to be able to cross the road, and it's not it's just not safe at the moment. There's far too much traffic. So um, I think this is fantastic. It just really does feel like things are moving along. Um, and, yeah, Dr Tripe's uh, parking analysis just gives us that ability to be able to say to retailers, actually, you do have enough parking, and to give them also assurance that people walking and biking and taking the bus also want to use your premises, and we will spend money here and make it, not just make it safe for cyclists, but let's make it a beautiful place to do shopping and <laughs> retail, you know, with lots of trees, with lots of traffic coming, and that is actually the best way to do uh, shopping um, into the future. But anyway, thank you very much to the Regs Committee for getting this onto the agenda. It's um, fantastic to see. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Paul. Oh, well, kia ora. I wasn't going to say anything, but oh, I was just so compelled to after that beautiful welcome. So thank you <laughs> to the Chair. This is a really interesting uh, subcommittee, so thanks for having me. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah, it might come along more often because... Um, <laughs> yeah, this obviously is such a majorly important part of the city, but particularly for our ward, and it's one of the biggest things that we hear about as the Lambton Ward Councillors, and like any responsible ward councillor, of course we've got to show up and hear about such an important issue for our people getting to and from mahi and to and from all of their different daily responsibilities safely. Um, so it's awesome to see this being addressed, and I want to thank you, Deputy Mayor Free, for bringing this forward and all of the work that you do for our, our cycling community and making sure that this is a viable, safe, accessible option for people to 
um, live their day-to-day -day lives. So thank you for all of that. And yesterday morning we had a meeting with um, the chief exec and all of the really awesome officers who are in charge of cycling to figure out how we can really have this connected, um, safe cycleway for the entire city because that's so critical for our transition to a, a zero carbon capital city. Um, and it's just an important thing that people are safe. I think that's a real bare minimum is that people can get to and from where they need to go without uh, um, being in fear of being hit off their bike or um, being abused or assaulted in any, in any way. So, um, yeah. This, I didn't really realise how important this subcommittee was, but, um, you know, after talking with officers, you know, what why can't we have more cycleways? What is the thing holding it up? It really is the traffic resolution process. And it is councillors interfering in that process sometimes. And again, like um, Councillor Panett was saying, we have to take accountability for that. Um, but I think we've got a really exciting configuration of this council. We've got so many progressive councillors who want to see that connected cycleway and um, across the city. So if we can support our colleagues to make the right decisions um, and to have a future-facing vision for the city, we absolutely have to do that. Um, and, and for this road, particularly, you know, there's a massive marae down there, you know, Pipitea marae is down there, and I would love to see that form a massive basis of that area, you know, as like a precinct for um, a kainga, you know, a place where people can get to places safely and they can stop and have a coffee on their way to work and see their friends and all of these things. So I think a vision for that part of the city is really important, because at the moment it's not really a place that anyone wants to go when it could be a really cool part of the city. So I think we're really lucky as a city that so much of our population want to see cycleways across the city and we really need to leverage that with the council that we currently have in place today and um, hopefully that means that next triennium again will have a really pro cycling positive configuration of council that can continue on this awesome work and we can undo all of the mistakes of the past so thank you so much to all of the submitters today for all of your advocacy and mahi thank you councillor paul on a on a more exciting note, you might be interested to know that this is actually not a subcommittee, it's a full committee of council. Yeah, so with, this, with decision making powers. My comments on this. I withdraw my comments, yes. <laughs> right, my, my comments on this, not to throw a spanner in the works, I mean, pun intended. I, I would probably cycle more if I felt that it was, well, like a lot of people, if it was safer to do so. And I very much enjoy gentle off-road cycling. That's beside the point. But I am also very conscious that there are retailers, and we got an email last night and again this morning from one of the business owners who is very genuinely concerned about the loss of parking. And so the amendment itself is not making a final decision. It's enabling us to perhaps bring forward the process in terms of going out to consult. So to listen to the views of all those who who will be affected. So at least we can reassure them. And I think um, I sent a brief note and I think Councillor Condi sent a note reassuring them that we will be looking into it further. So it's not a final decision a at this stage, but I, yeah, I, I'm in agreement that we do need to, we do need to make improvements well, and beyond. All right, okay, I think I'll leave it at that and go back to um, Deputy right. Mayor for right quick, of reply. Quick right of reply. Um, thanks to everybody for being so positive. Um, of course you would be. Um, but just to say, I think some important things were said today, um, and one of the ones I remember is parking can never trump safety. And um, people have alluded to uh, Dr. Tripp. Um, I do remember when he first told us about his horrendous accident on Hutt Road, and that's what gave me the resolve to go to every single retailer down Hutt Road and just explain to them that we had a health and safety issue, major health and safety issue, and they would be losing their right to park on our footpaths, because at that point everyone was parking down all of Hutt Road's footpaths, and we can hardly remember that now. And at the time, you know, some of them were a little bit negative, but actually they adjusted and um, everything sort of reached a new equilibrium, and I'm really confident that will happen with this. Um, just also to say that um, the resolve is definitely there now. I'm, I'm really confident about that. But it's important that to note that we, with this amendment, we're definitely fixing a time frame. So this time frame's there. 
and nothing's going to make that slip. And hopefully, the, the, of course, we're going out to consultation, so we can't be absolutely certain what we're going to hear, but um, I'm reasonably confident we'll be proceeding um, with this, and then, of course, we need to actually make it happen on the road. But thank you, everybody. Um, look forward to putting this to the vote. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Free. At this point, we shall vote. Right, that is carried. Back to the substantive. Does anyone wish to make any further comment at this point before we vote? Okay, we shall vote on the substantive, which is to receive the information and thank the petitioner. Plus the, um, yeah, plus the amendment. Right, thank you very much, that is carried. On to general business at this point, the um, names for the new right of ways of Cottonwood Lane and Woodridge. Do we have any, before we actually invite the officers to the table, they've been sitting, waiting patiently for some considerable time, are there, does anyone have any questions? that we're going to be asking the officers. So, yes? Yep, okay, officers, would you like to come to the table, please? So we welcome Carleen and Michael, and a question for you from Councillor Condi. Uh, kia ora, thank you. Um, just looking at one of the proposals um, is for Ara Toitoi, and the, the um, Te Rapautama team came back and said that actually toy toy is a grass, not a not a tree. Um, did they have a view about whether that was that was a deal breaker for them, or whether they had a preference about that, or are we we all right with including a grass in a tree suburb theme? The the Abora culture team advised that the um, toy toy is a grass. Um, however, uh, Te Rapautama had not expressed a discomfort with that, and I did come back. To that. That seems fine. Okay, there being no other questions, we've been asked to agree to three Te Reo Māori names for a private right of ways or rights of way in Woodridge as de detailed in our papers and to approve the existing name for the extension of the lane. And various options have been given to us, but these are the ones that are being um, recommended to us, so I'm moving the, I'm proposing that you move the recommendation in the officer's report. Can I have a seconder, please? Councillor Matthews, would you like to speak? I just, while officers are here, I, I just want to thank you publicly for the responsiveness around, um, you know, being proactive about te reo Māori names, and um, I'm so excited, uh, and the use of ara to go with them, so this is a beautiful thing, thank you very much, and, and very happy to support it. Councillor Day. Yeah, kia ora. Um, I just want to also um, echo what Councillor Matthews says. This is a really um, fantastic uh, 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 step forward um, following Ara Patukawinga um, the decision recently. It's great to see Ara being used um, in this in these uh, rights of way. Um, and I think it's also it's really great to see um, the way that the suburb theme is being um, incorporated in the Te Reo Māori way. So often, um, previously, the, it's been things like cottonwood and stuff, and it's great to see that we're looking at the other names for the plants and how they can be used, and they're all beautiful names and um, quite easy to say, as Councillor Sparrow was showing me before. And if people are having difficulty saying ara, you could think of it being like a cow's udder 
because I know that sometimes people struggle with the rolling their R's, but sometimes if you think of it in another language in a different way, it might help. Um, but yeah, really exciting. Thank you so much for the mahi you've been doing on this and working with the developer as well to um, talk through the options and um, in the Te Rapautama team. It's fantastic, so thank you. Kia ora. I'd just like to say, yeah, thank you too, and for all the information, all the background work that goes on and the explanation, um, the details as to what uh, each of these plants, trees, grasses <laughs> are. Yeah, it's, that is appreciated, so yeah, very much. Thank you, Councillor Condi. And just to add to all that, it's really exciting to see the Macron um, you know, for a long time that's been a, a challenge. So fingers crossed that we're able to, to include the Macron on the sign in this, in this um, instance. But it's just great to see us continue to keep pushing and keeping that in mind. So thank you. Okay, now that the um, motion has been moved and seconded and that there's four recommendations there, including the Macron on the Ara Kanuka. I'll ask you to vote accordingly. Thank you very much. Now on to traffic resolutions. I imagine we will have questions of officers, so I would like to invite Suntek Kong and yep. Wendy Ferguson to the table. I have a few questions, but I will, uh, I will uh, allow our other councillors to go first. With Councillor Condi. Um. Soon we were just talking in the break about Arthur Street and I was uh, hoping you could answer the questions for everybody who is here um, about whether it's possible for us to come back with another traffic resolution in the future looking at extending that loading zone um, in response to the query we had from Doug about some of the larger vehicles that they have coming in. And he was also raising issue, uh, a question about whether we might be able to add some more P15 P15 into that area rather than P60 in a future traffic resolution. Um, can you just let us know if that's a possibility? Uh, thanks, Councillor Condi. Yes, th that would be a possibility to look at uh, the changes that we are proposing now and monitor how it is being used. And, and from there, we can sort of uh, make amendments to it. Thanks. Uh, thank you. And then on Hataitai Road, we had some feedback from the Residents Association. They asked whether we could look at those P120 parks that are outside of the community centre, if we could put a time limit on them from 8am to 6pm so that residents can still use them to park overnight. Um, is that a change that we can make? Uh, that's a change that can be made at, by the committee because it's reducing the extent of the restriction to less. And my one last question is just on Halston Road. Um, did we manage to, to touch base with the house on Arthur Carmen Street that's near to that bus stop? The letter has been delivered to the owner and uh, I've not seen any feedback yet. Okay, thank you. Unless uh, Wendy has any update. Councillor O'Neill. Um, thank you. <clears throat> Sorry, I was just wondering on Arthur Street if you could talk in addressing um, some of the concerns raised by a member of the public earlier around these improvements not being supportive of pedestrian safety. Could you just talk a little bit about the weighting given to pedestrian safety with this Arthur Street traffic resolution? When that space was uh, being developed, the idea was uh, pedestrians would walk on the south side of, of that area. Now, uh, during the design stage, uh, there were proposals to put in yellow lines to actually make it very clear to drivers not to park there, but that, that decision was not taken forward as a result. Over time, uh, uh, it was not noted that it was meant to be a, a pedestrian area. The reason why I say that is uh, because if you have cars parking on the south side of that lane, and you have a moving vehicle on the remaining space, it's, it's, it's unsafe. 
So we need that additional safe on the south side to have that uh, safety clearance. So, so the proposal to put P15 on, on the south side will actually squeeze the pedestrian into a traffic lane where, where large vehicles will be using as well. Okay, thank you. And then, um, sorry, just one question on a different traffic resolution. Is that okay? Yeah. Um, uh, uh, Councillor Condi just asked a question around uh, the Hai Tai Tai Community Centre um, traffic resolution, but talking to residents, they've wanted um, residential um, parking permits there for a long time. So could you just um, explain how a resident or a community might be able to start getting the ball rolling with council and getting residents parking in their road? Uh, currently, we, we are working with the parking on the parking policy to ensure that we roll up some of these uh, requests for residents parking. We're going to do a trial on Saar Street just to, to see how that is going to work because uh, not every residents would want a residence parking permit. So we, we just need to test out how the parking policy and the other example that Deputy Mayor has given to us is Duncan Terrace. Mm -hmm. So we, we just have to see how, how we can apply that parking policy because the whole street, mm -hmm. only certain people would want it and, and not everyone. So yeah, we, we're not sure at this stage. Awesome. And sorry, just one more part. I know a little bit off topic, but do we know um, when the completion of the trial at Saar Street might be rolling through, or when? Do you know, do we have a timeline on that? Uh, currently, I can't give you a timeline, councillor, because uh, we're currently down on resources. So yeah, once I have that, I'll, I'll advise you on, on cool. what timeline we'll do for Saar Street. Yeah. Cool. Thank you so much. I have a, um, a couple of questions. The, one of the submitters, I think it might have been Doug, talked about trucks in the street blocking it for up to half an hour, and I, we ran out of time to, um, for me to ask him how necessary that was and whether that is a regular occurrence, but well, I guess I can't really ask you whether what you know in that regard, but I can ask you this question. Well, actually, I don't know if I can. Um, that was in regard to enforcement. Uh, do you, more than once, the comment came up that there could be better enforcement in that street in regards to time restrictions and whatever else, but is that something you can respond to or do we need to follow that through with our um, parking people? Uh, thanks, Councillor Sparrow. Uh, my response to that is that uh, any servicing from the street, my understanding from WorkSafe is illegal because that involves carrying loads from a public road to private site. That's something that I've checked in the past because uh, we, we were having a business using forklift, you know, uh, delivering things onto a truck or taking things off the truck. To answer your question on, on that, I think you know, I can only request parking services to increase the enforcement of that area once uh, the proposed traffic resolution has been approved and see how that goes as part of the monitoring process to see whether you know, we, we are creating a problem for the businesses or we are, you know, are able to make amendments to, to assist the businesses. Because uh, using the street for loading and unloading, I to me, is, is unsafe for, for the users. Thank you. Hand over to Councillor Councillor Conde at this yes. point. Thank you. Sorry, I just had one more question. Um, just can you let us know about the in the traffic resolution people have in their papers? We were proposing no stopping signs on Arthur Street, um, but after conversations we've had, we're now proposing broken yellow lines. Can you just talk to the councillors about why we're proposing to make that change? Um, the, the difference between the broken yellow lines and the signs is that it's more evident it's on the road that you can't park in certain areas, whereas a sign, if someone misses a sign, they can sort of debate on, on you now there's a sign missing or the sign is too far to be seen. And uh, yellow lines is a, a more effective way of communicating to the drivers that this, this, you should not park on this side of the street. Before before um, you take over, Councillor Condi, for the report, 
I do have one in regard to the, this talk about the, the P5 signs referring to how long the vehicle can be left unattended. Now, how, how well is this understood? Because there seems to be almost confusion that that's the maximum time that a vehicle can be in that particular location, but it, that's not necessarily the case. Is, there, is this an area of some confusion that could be better, um, people could need to understand better, or? You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Right. Thanks, Councillor Sparrow. Uh, yeah, it's clear. It's of. It's unclear that uh, P5 actually allows you to have the vehicle unattended for five minutes, and then you're back loading or unloading, and then at that time gets extended all the time. It's unclear to a lot of uh, users of of those loading areas that th this is a time limit because the time limit is based on how close the businesses are to the loading zone. So, for example, on Lambton Key, it's much longer because you have to go up several floors and all that. So, so yeah, I, I don't have a straightforward answer, but I think it's something that we, we can communicate with with the customer. Councillor Condry, the floor is yours. All right, thank you, everybody. Um, I don't, we've sort of talked about the, the traffic resolution that I think need out most of our attention. There's 22 this week, but many of them are, um, you know, minor broken lines near intersections and, and you know, P10 changes and whatnot. So um, unless you have any questions during debate, I'm just going to focus on, on a, the few that I've just mentioned. So, you know, we've heard lots about Arthur Street today, um, that this is really a space that has never quite used it was as it has never quite worked out and been used as it was intended to be after Caro Drive was finished. Um, it's a really important pedestrian and, and cyclist connection, um, and as as we heard, is used extensively by school kids and um, and uh, lots of other uh, vulnerable users during the day. Uh, we also have on that street a number of commercial premises who have a lot of need for um, particularly kind of loading zones, loading and unloading. And so this is a, an area where we're just trying to manage a number of uh, competing uses of the space, you know. Um, and I just want to acknowledge and thank Patrick Morgan for coming to speak to us because I, I, I agree, Patrick, that it was, and as our officers have said, the intention in the space was, was never that there should be parking along that left-hand side of the street. Um, that that has just is something that has built up informally over time because of because of the way that we marked the street, or in this case, the way we didn't mark the street. Um, so that informal parking has built up over time on that left hand side, and is becoming a real problem for the pedestrians um, and cyclists. But also, as we heard, um, becoming a problem for some of the other business owners who are trying to use that that street. Um, so this is a, a traffic resolution where we're just trying to, to, to manage these competing demands. And I think um, I thank the staff for the work that they've done on this because I think they've they've done a, a really good job of looking at how we can include loading zones in this space, um, at looking at um, that conversation about moving to, to broken yellow lines rather than signs. Because as you all know, as I also hold the parking portfolio and I'm always thinking when we're looking at these traffic resolutions about how easy is this going to be for one of our parking wardens to enforce if they show up on the street. Um, and, you know, if we've got those signs, people could miss them. Um, and then they then suddenly there's there's more of a kind of an appetite to, to get into an argument with if you come across a parking warden. Whereas broken yellow lines, as Soon was saying, is it's very clear what's what's permitted and what's not permitted, and and that kind of clarity can actually just make it a lot safer for our parking wardens on the street. Um, so I think it was great that we had Doug come and talk to us today, and based on those conversations, we will look at whether uh, at possibly extending the loading zone. We'll have to talk to Park Sport and Rec because there's a tree. <laughs> There's a tree in the way, Terry. Oh dear. So um, there's some. It's, it's one of these streets where there's some lovely. They did some lovely, you know, trees and greens, and we love that. Um, but you know, um, we'll we'll have to work through that about whether we can extend that loading zone through there. But I think it will make the space work better for everybody who's involved. Um, 
So that is something that will come back to us and we'll continue working with Doug and the other businesses there to see how this goes um, as, we, as we implement it. But I think it's really important after we've heard about some of the challenges for pedestrians and cyclists that we just move ahead with what we have ahead of us, but agree that we're going to keep an eye on this space and we're going to keep working in this space um, to make sure that it's still working for the businesses there as well. Um, I just wanted to thank Councillor Rush, who's not here, but who did um, reach out for me on um, on, on the Hatai Road um, traffic resolution and talked to the Residents Association there and got a really constructive suggestion back from them, which I'm always so grateful for. Um, you know, I know that this is a challenge for residents where this is an already an overparked street, and we're coming in and saying, oh, we want you know, we want to put a bit of, of turnover parking here to support the community centre. Now that decision is absolutely consistent with our parking policy of supporting short-term parking for turnover at, at these kind of community facilities, but obviously it does put pressure on that street. So I thought what a great constructive suggestion to say, okay, why don't we just time limit it? And that means that, you know, people can actually, after six o'clock, they can park their car, they can stay overnight, and it just makes it a little bit more flexible for everybody. So um, really appreciate that constructive suggestion from the Residents Association and Councillor Rush for doing the legwork on that one. Um, the other one I just wanted to mention is Halston Road. Um, there's a traffic resolution for Halston Road where we're proposing um, to paint the bus, the proposed bus stop and to paint out the bus box. Um, so there's already a bus stop sign here and we're proposing one of our safety changes. There's not a box for the bus painted on the road. And so we're suggesting that we're going to paint the box on the road and that we're going to add a, a new bus shelter here. So obviously we, we um, always, uh, it's always great when we can add a bus shelter. It's something that we hear from Greater Wellington all the time. Um, the only thing I wanted to raise with you is that this, if, if you look at um, the picture of your traffic resolution, this, this house on the corner, um, where the bus stop is going to be right next to. Um, accidentally, they were missed out in the letter drop because their address is on Arthur Carmen Street mm -hmm. and not on Halston Road. Now, earlier this week, we picked this up and the staff have done a letter drop to that house on Arthur Carmen Street and we haven't heard any objection back from them, but I wanted to flag to you, just so that you were all aware of that, that that house hadn't had quite as much time as the others around. There were no other concerns from any of the other people who had been notified. Um, so if anybody does have a concern about that, we could look at pulling the traffic resolution, but at this point, I, personally, I'm quite comfortable with going ahead with it um, as it stands, but I wanted to flag that so that you all had that information. The other thing I just wanted to um, speak to, um, particularly with all the Northern Ward councillors here in the room, uh, is the, the shed path at Willowbank Road in Tawa, which is something our community has been waiting a really long time for. <laughs> Um, and have been asking um, for a long time to, for this kind of uh, safer pedestrian access and cyclist access through to that train station. So it's so exciting to see it um, coming to us. Um, we can take, you can take, be the bearers of good news back to the Tower Community Board. I'm sure they'll be thrilled to see that we are making progress on that one. So uh, that is all. I uh, invite a seconder, please. Don't actually need to speak right now. Yeah. We're just checking on whether we need an actual amendment to do the slight changes that we've already discussed. Um, do we need? To, should we put some wording, some very quick wording together? I can do that. A five minute. Yeah, we're in June okay. for. Approximately five minutes. Maybe less if we're if we're speedy. Okay.
I'm just going to, I want to speak really quickly to the Willow Bank one because uh, it was one of the early things I um, had come across my um, emails when I got into council and it originally goes back to 2014, something with um, <laughs> Celia Wade Brown in it. Um, so I guess the underlying message is to the community is persevere when these things happen. <laughs> and and the, the reason it's taken this long is no fault of any um, one here, any person here at council. It's really the complexity of the fact that this is land that um, Kiwi Rail have control over. So there's been a lot of careful negotiation, um, I'm sure, in the background trying to come up with a solution. I actually thought at the beginning of this year, I think some more communications went round. I thought, I don't think we're going to be able to find a solution to this because it, it's so, it is so complex. And the community um, sort of, I think, felt like they'd exhausted their options. So it's really exciting to see that we've come up, that a solution has been found, and it is a really good solution um, and can keep our residents safe. So it's a really great outcome. And I do want to acknowledge the Tower Community Board. I know Malcolm Sparrow and Graham Hanson have had many um, conversations, visits to the site. And uh, so thank you very much, Councillor Sparrow, and to Graham. Hanson, who's out there somewhere, um, for their advocacy. Um, it really is a good, it's a good um, acknowledgement to the public about how, um, how participation does make a difference, and we're seeing it happen today with other things as well, and with um, Arthur Street. I think there was some amazing um, things articulated through the public participation around the needs of cyclists and people walking in the way that the area is working, not working. That it's really important that we acknowledge that that, that, impact, that does have an impact when we hear from our, um, our residents and what it, what it is like for the locals. So, yeah, really awesome work from our staff on these. So thank you very much. I'll follow on with a very brief comment to um, commending resident John Ailey. I see he uh, has submitted on this, but he's one resident who's sort of hung in for many years and has um, achieved this result um, thanks to his persistence. Okay, anyone else comment, any d debate on any of the um, traffic resolutions before we put it to the vote? Your, your, um I, I will, I'd just like to actually thank um, Councillor Condy. I know we love thanking each other, but um, <laughs> I, do th I do think that this is really a potentially very um, contentious area in the fact that we are working through so many traffic resolutions systematically and thoroughly and without actually a whole lot of, um, you know, sort of controversy. I know it arises, but I've never felt more confident actually in the teamwork that we have in this area between political, you know, representatives and the staff and the way that we... Um, try to keep an open mind about whether there are actually solutions to contentious things like how do we value a car parking space and where do we put the highest value and how do we manage it so that we're getting the most bang from buck from that increasingly scarce resource without saying car parking's bad in itself but we need to balance a whole lot of things and I think through this committee we're actually doing it really well. Um, and the bus boxes... We, um, it's good to see one of those, and uh, yeah, we need to do a whole lot more of those. So through this committee, I feel like we are picking off some things which have best just been in the too hard basket for a long time. I thank you, Councillor Condi, and all the staff that have worked on these. And I don't really need a right of reply, but I'll just ask Sean to scroll up so you can just see the actual wording that we've put in here. Um, to the two minor changes we're making to Arthur Street and Hatayte Road, so that you can actually read it before we vote on it. So it has been moved and seconded. So we are at the point of voting. Thank you very much. Thank you to officers for all your work and my thank you to Councillor Condi too for all the effort that, is, that goes, goes into this and often taking up most of her morning tea time. <laughs> right. Councillor Sparrow, I just want to have a word, if, if I may, to, to just thank Charles Kingsford for all the hard work he has done and I'm just representing him in presenting this and he has his dedication, his hard work in getting a lot of this traffic resolution through for the community's benefit. So I just want to officially thank Charles Kingsford for his hard work. Thank you. Let's do that. I think that's a really good idea. Yeah, we do. It just has to be
We just note it. Um, yeah, we can just make a minute, perhaps. Yeah. Minute light. Can we work together some wording very quickly? Unanimously, well, the committee unanimously agreed to think. Passed by it, committee. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank and you. some of really us actually it. wanted his um, new email address so we could write and thank him because we've yes. worked with him for so many years in some cases. Um, yeah. I will forward that information to you. Thank you. I don't think he won't have any time to do that. Thank you, Chair. Okay, well, we will officially move. Who, who proposed the, that we do this officially? Right, okay, well, um, we're moving that we thank Charles Kingsford for all the work that he's done over the years. So that's being moved by Councillor Matthews and seconded by Deputy Mayor Free. I'll just thank um, Officer Charles Kingsford for all the work. And as a committee, we should um, perhaps send him a, a note or an email, so I've written it on my hand. So we're at the point of voting. Right. Councillor Condi, is, oh yes, it's gone through. Thank you very much. All right. Yeah. Right, item 3.3, three, three, proposed road stopping. Welcome to the table, John Friends. The land adjoining 12 Endeavour Street, Lyle Bay. We have a whole bunch of questions for this, no doubt. Um, Councillor O'Neill. Thank you. Um, I would like to know, why was this land originally acquired by the council or under Public Works Act? Road, okay. Um, I was wondering, uh, I note that this section of land has, you're talking about um, in the paper, 12 Endeavour Street is a property to the left of it if we're looking up, um, but who owns the concrete slab and the little garage shed, the, the other, because there wasn't a property marking on the map, who owns the other part? Are you talking about the bit that's being road stopped or beside the bit that's being <laughs> Beside the bit that's being road stop, is that owned I, by I, anyone? I don't know who owns that. Um, it'll be an encroach. If, if someone does own it, it might have been a, a, a garage there previously, if it's a slab, and there might have been an encroachment licence, but that's managed by the encroachments team. Oh, yep. Cool. Thank you. Um, and then uh, just a quick question about, at the end of the paper, obviously one of the, a part of the next step is to look at a purchase agreement. When we um, discharge land that we've held under Public Works Act, would we normally expect that that pur purchase agreement would be at market rate? Yes. Yeah, okay, cool. Thank you. There being no further questions, my understanding is that there are lots of these um, little parcels of unformed legal road right around the city and discussion point 12 of our papers remind us that council shall endeavour to dispose of any land not required for the public work for which it was taken, etc., etc. So over time, a lot of this is being uh, disposed of, mostly being purchased by the adjoining property owner and that's what's happening on this occasion. This does appear to be a straightforward case of council selling 70 square metres of unformed legal road to the occupants of 12 Endeavour Street, Lyle Bay. 
So I move that we accept the recommendations in the officer's report, which simply allows them to proceed to the next step in the process, which involves about six different steps, <laughs> I think. <laughs> so on that basis, um, oh, can I have a seconder, please? Councillor O'Neill, do you wish to speak? Okay, any debate? No, let us vote, thank you. Oh, right. <laughs> thank you, John. Thank you to you and Sarah too for all the work that goes on behind the scenes and bringing these papers to the table. Thank you. Okay, the last item on the agenda, page 195, if you'll if you need that number. A request for a development contribution postponement. Um, we have Officer Nicole Tudor here, so if you'd like to come to the table. Oh, and Mark, sorry, I didn't see you there, Mark. <laughs> right, part of the media team. Right. So we, um, as you know, we've all already had the opportunity to ask officers a few questions about this and for them to fill us in as to why this is happening in this way. Do you Councillors, have any further questions? Right. Yes, Mark. <laughs> Sorry, um, Council. I'm not. I'm not a council, but I was just. Um, just a point I did want to make, just further to question raised last in last when we met last week in the meeting. So there's, there's two questions. I think it was Councillor Condy um, had asked, and so the first question was asked, and it was in relation to how we sought just legal advice in relation to making this decision. So the first question I've recorded. Does the Regulatory Processes Committee have the authority to approve going against the policy, which is section 2.6.3, and allow the university to still apply for remission if we do not agree with their self-assessment, even though they've made a part payment? And um, I've got a, an answer from legal team, which I'll summarise. So the, the summary of the answer is that the Regulatory Processes Committee, as delegated by council, and I've got a number of sections quoted here, has the authority to approve an exception to the policy which is section 2.6.3, and accept an application from the university to remit DCs, even though there has been a part payment. The, um, this is because the DC policy at paragraph 2.6.1 identifies that it has complete discretion in considering remissions. So that's a long way of saying, yes, we do. Um, and second, the second question is also a yes, but I'll just give you a bit of the explanation. Does a committee have delegation to allow the university to occupy the buildings, even though section 3.2.10 says a building cannot be occupied. Again, the answer is yes, and just a bit more detail. In essence, the committee could allow the university to occupy the buildings, even though section 3.2.10 says the building cannot be occupied. This is because this is, is, because this is the poly, policy position for processing remission applications. So I've got, got a more lengthy answer than that, but that gives it in, in a nutshell, yeah. Thank you for that. I did have a couple of questions written down here, and you may have partly, if not, completely answer the first one and that is can you I'll read the whole thing out that I've written down can you please sum up for us why we should agree to this because it is a little out of the ordinary and why you think it's not likely to set a precedent in terms of DC remission requests I, I, okay. yeah I'm happy yeah, I'll take, <laughs> take that question I think in terms of why we should do this it's um it's I, we do have a good working relationship with Victoria University, clearly, as an organisation. This, these negotiations have been continuing for a period of time, but the, the challenge is we've, we've been continuing to issue certificates of public use when really we should be issuing the final CCC, but that then enables things like fire protection and those things to be monitored, those things are placed on schedules. So this allows that to be, to be cleared up to all that while we're allowing for those negotiations to take place. I suppose anything that we... We will clearly say that this doesn't set a precedent. Anything that is decided in committee could be taken that way, but it is a quite an unusual kind of situation, and Victoria University aren't a developer like we would normally be dealing with in a DC, so I think it's a, it's a risk, but a fairly small risk would be my suggestion. If you didn't move free. Sorry, because I might, might have missed this when I was away, but um, so point three, we're agreeing to allow the council and the university to apply a special assessment or submit a remission to the committee. So does the 
remission, the application for remission come back to this committee, but what about the special assessment? If the specialist advisors deem that they are paying less than they should, then yes, it will come back to committee. We, what, we would never give a, a reduced fee without your permission. Well, that um, satisfies me, thank you. Okay, thank you. We have been given um, valid reasons why we should agree to this. And we have also heard council have been working with the university to reach an agreement on this for some considerable time. The discussions haven't yet been finalised, but we've been asked to agree to postpone development contributions for six months as allowed for in section 26. Well, I don't need to read out the whole thing. You have the recommendations in front of you. I move that we accept these. A seconder, please. Councillor Condi, would you like to speak? Uh, very briefly, I just want to say that um, you know I really appreciate the work that, st that staff and officers are doing to to work uh, constructively with Te Hirangawaka, Victoria University of Wellington. They're such an important institution in our city, mm. and so it's great to know that we have a really um, a really good partnership with them. You know, we want to be able to support them where possible as they're trying to improve their campus so that they can attract cities to the students to the city who are such an important part of our vibrancy. So it's just great to see that partnership approach happening. That said, I'm also grateful that there's, there's a six-month time limit on it yes. because we need to, to make sure that our partners know that, that mm. these negotiations can't carry on forever. So um, I was really pleased to see that that's, that's built into the recommendation. Um, and, and really, um, you know, thank you for the, the, the answers that you got for us for those legal questions to give us the certainty around that. I really appreciate it. Um, and, you know, great work. Thank you. Yes, again, thank you from all of us. It's much appreciated. Let us vote. Thanks. <laughs> Carried unanimously. Thank you, everyone, for your contributions this morning. And we shall stand now to say the closing karakia. Unuhia, 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 ki te uru tapanui. Ki a wātea, te ngākau, te tinana, te wairua. I te āra takatū. Ā e rongo, whakāria aki. Ki a wātea, aira, kua wātea. Thank you again, everyone. Meeting. Meeting close at 11.52. And <laughs>